Susan, in trying to understand the brain, which is a major concern today to mm -hmm. many scientists, you have to build some models. Uh, uh, that's the mm -hmm. way to start. Mm -hmm. So you have a framework and then you test it to see if it works. One of the current models of thinking about the brain is a so-called computational theory. It comes from a lot of computer scientists who don't say mm -hmm. the brain is, is exactly like a computer today, but it works in similar fashions. How do you deal with that theory? Okay, and I think we have to distinguish first between a model and a hypothesis. A model is a word that's banded around a lot, especially in relationship to computational models of the brain. Mm -hmm. So it depends what it is you want to model, okay? Because if I wanted to model flight, I would build something that had the essential feature of defying gravity. I wouldn't bother about incorporating a beak and feathers for example, yeah? Now, the reason I could model flight in this way is that I know the salient feature that I want to extract at the expense of the extraneous ones, the beak and the feathers. Hmm. Depending on what you want to model, let's say consciousness, which is, of course, the, the holy grail for everyone. If you knew what the salient feature was of consciousness that you were going to incorporate into your design, your machine, and you knew what the extraneous features were that you could omit, then you would have solved the problem already. So, you know, my own view is if you just think it through, this notion of computational models of consciousness, they don't really make sense because <laughs> it begs the question, you know what you're going to model, in which case you solve the problem. So that's the, that's the first issue. Um, some people, nonetheless, like to think, even leaving aside consciousness, that the brain works, quote, like a computer. Um, the hypothesis, therefore, is that, and you can test that. Now, my own view is that you immediately run into problems, as Roger Penrose has said, um, there's no algorithms for common sense or intuition, and yet this is what is a feature mm. of the human cognitive tool set. I, as a neuroscientist, especially more as a neurochemist, will point to the relationship of the chemicals, the qualitatively different chemicals and the different things that they can do, especially in concert with the other great um, control systems of the body, immune system and the endocrine system, incorporated into a biological body that will not necessarily be automatically there in some reductionist um, computational brain system. My own view is that what we should do is take biological phenomena and see them and try and describe them mathematically. That's different from assuming or imposing on the brain this rather rigid computational algorithmic form of processing, which I don't think we have validation for saying. And as the Niels Bohr once said, a great physicist, Niels Bohr, he said to a student once, um, you're not thinking, you're just being logical. <laughs> yeah. And another quote Sorry. I like, I have to I have to show you this other quote, is um, back to conscious computers, Stuart Sutherland, sadly now dead, a psychologist, he said, um, he would believe a computer was conscious when it ran off with his wife, <laughs> which, I think, <laughs> which I think highlights, highlights the issue. So again, there's many questions you can ask about computers and brains. Does it work computationally? No, I don't think it does because of the qualitative nature of the chemicals and the context and the but, hardware but, but, being the let's, software. Let's, let's get into that because mm. the, the argument is that even things that are non-digital can be ultimately represented digitally. In fact, there are some theories of yeah. physics that say, says that the, sure. that all everything is, is di digital and information at the lowest level. But, yeah. Whether that's true or not doesn't matter. The, the point is, is that it is possible to represent things digitally Digitally, even if you have a, a broad um, broad chemicals that work qualitatively, that could be expressed in, a, in, sure. in, in that fashion. Well, I was about to say, it depends what you mean by things. You know, what are the things that you want to express? Yeah, um, If it's the action of acetylcholine on the brain or dopamine, I'm sure you can do that in a model. But as I'm saying, I think where there's the fuzziness at the moment with the aficionados of the computational approach is what exactly are you trying to do, what question are you asking, what is it you're modeling, what are you describing? And these things, to the best of my knowledge, are poorly articulated in the enthusiasm for the glamour of the ever bigger computer. Well, yeah. a, an algorithmic approach uh, is the way we've made all the technology in the world, and it, it works in making things more complicated. I think the uh, a challenge that some would, would have mm -hmm. to contradict it would be say is, what is the alternative model? What is the alternative well, Okay, model? so, okay. First of all, just because if I couldn't come up with an alternative doesn't mean to say it validates no, it, the existing one. it doesn't. One. Yeah. It doesn't. Um, quantum physics, for example, as far as I know, isn't something that depends on algorithmic processing or reasoning. Okay. To the best of my okay. scanty knowledge of, of quantum right. theory and look how important that is in explaining right. many of the things <laughs> and how that's helped um, advance, advance life. So, 
my own view, it depends what you're trying to do. Are you trying to build a brain that's like a computer or a computer that's like a brain? Are you trying to explain consciousness? Are you trying to try and turn something qualitative and, and um, non-digital into something that can be described? Mm. All these things are separate questions. Are questions yes, yeah. they interrelate. And they, they interrelate, but they are, they are separate questions. Okay. And my own view is for the kind of things that I personally put a priority on, like trying to understand consciousness or trying to understand Alzheimer's disease or trying to understand how the brain works, coming along with an artificial model and imposing it on a biological system and saying this should be possible isn't for me the most productive. What I would prefer to do, and I do do, and I now have a physicist in my lab, for example, is to take a phenomenon that I'm interested in, for example, the mid-level organization of the brain, these mm -hmm. so-called assemblies of brain cells, mm -hmm. and ask him, can he describe it for me mathematically? That's not the same as a computational approach. Being able to have a mathematical formula that could generalize across certain conditions is not the same as just having a step-by-step -step computational um, argument. Uh, I, I agree to a first approximation, but when we say an algorithmic approach, I mean, that can become very complex and very sophisticated on the one hand, and the other hand, you may have some very simple rules that can itself generate enormous complexity yeah. that go beyond any uh, a priori uh, mm -hmm. uh, analysis of what those rules yeah. can, can, can yeah. deliver. I agree. An, an, an obvious example is something called the game of life, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you're sure, familiar sure, with, sure. with the black and the white, where right. you can generate very complex patterns through some very simple very rules. Cool. So, yeah, of course, that's not to say that because these things exist and you can do it, that that is, that is the best way to approach brain function. I'd put the challenge open to these computationists and say, okay, show me something that you can do. Because as yet, I haven't been convinced or impressed by that approach. And it's an article of faith that in the dim future, will computers be conscious? Will we build conscious machines? Who knows? I mean, obviously I can't say, because you can never say something's not going to be the case. But from what I've seen so far, I cannot see this as a particularly exciting or insightful approach.